Hey guys, Ivan here, and in today's video we got a couple of very interesting bodybuilding updates. The first one is from Derek Lansford, and basically just a chest training, but then after that he does a little bit of posing, and you're gonna see why this one is very interesting. It's because one of the biggest flaws that Derek always basically had on stage was the lack of separation in his upper chest or basically his overall chest and like the, the delt area from the front. So chest, a delt area. And now in this video, he's basically showing us what it looks like right now. And you guys know that in this offseason, Derek really did not push for like a crazy amount of mass. It's not like he was uh, bulking, like it's not like he was uh, like trying to get as big as possible by any cost. No, no, he actually stayed, you know, relatively light compared to his stage weight. He was very close to it. His conditioning stayed very good the entire year. And I was wondering, what is the game plan here? I mean, there are flaws that he needs to improve, like, especially the lag details and size and then chest separation. And I was thinking if he gets bigger, then he's going to be able, he's going to be able to afford to get leaner and keep the size everywhere and get more details in those areas. But no, apparently, I guess the plan was to stay leaner, stay smaller and like work on details. And it seems like it's paying off, it paid off, I mean, we'll see on stage, but at least in this video right here, it looks like this area, this particular area of his, is showcasing some new details that we haven't really seen before, especially on the stage. Now, there is like 8 weeks or so for him to get even harder, even leaner. I mean, he's already very good in condition, like, he doesn't need to get much, much leaner, but he can get a lot harder, I'm sure about that, like, when you do certain, when you take certain things before the stage, you can definitely harden up, for sure, so, we can expect something better from Derek Lance for this year. And really, he was already basically big enough, like for his height, he already packed so much muscle that he doesn't really need to get that much bigger. He, it's not like he's competing against a big Remy or somebody massive, you know, his competition is Hadi, who is about his height, who is not exactly the biggest bodybuilder. Then you have Samson, who is maybe bigger, but a lot taller. I don't think uh, Samson can be bigger than Derek. Andrew Jack definitely can't be bigger than Derek. And then there is like uh, Nick Walker, who could be, who is definitely bigger, but with his structure, it doesn't really seem that, that he's that much bigger. So really, uh, Derek needed to stay pretty much the same, like same size with his shape, with his muscle bellies, with his waist size and everything. Now, if he did get bigger, who's gonna guarantee that his waist is not gonna get bigger as well? That he's gonna ruin his lines, and that's one of his biggest traits, one of the biggest reasons why he actually won the Mr. Olympia along with his uh, freak factor from behind, like the craziest back double bicep, basically one of the freakiest of all time, and then like those lines from the front, very aesthetic lines. So, really, the best thing he could do is stay about the same size, just try to work on details. And I know a lot of you guys will disagree with the fact that you can work on details. A lot of you will think that you can only grow muscle and get leaner and that's it. And I, I can see that, maybe that's correct, but it doesn't seem like it is because it seems like Derek actually improved some details. I mean, I don't know what he did for this. Like, did he really focus on, I don't know, like squeezing the upper chest, doing some kind of isolation exercises? I don't know, but I can definitely see some lines here that I have not been seeing before from Derek. Now, this is probably gonna still be a weak area for him compared to Hadi, but he might close that gap a little bit. Hadi's back is gonna be more detailed, drier, and he's gonna close the gap in that regard, but, you know, Derek is doing his homework as well. He's focused on details and, like, dryness through the chest and shoulders, and hopefully the legs will be a little bit fuller, and maybe more detailed, more separated. So, yeah, this fight between Hadi and Derek is getting interesting. I'm not saying that they're gonna necessarily be top two again, but with the way things are looking right now, it's very likely to be the outcome. But even if they are 2-3, and three, if Andrew Jack or Samson Dauda win the Mr. Olympia, that's still gonna be a very, very interesting battle, because these guys are both bringing something good. Alright, next up, we got an update from Krijo, who actually just had a shoulder surgery, and you guys know that that's the reason why he stopped his competitive season, 
he was not on that show he did the Emperor Cup Spain and at that time he said the reason why he didn't look very good on that stage why he was off is because he was having some shoulder issues for quite a while he was having pains he had difficulty training his chest and his shoulders and uh, he decided to stop his competitive season after the Emperor Cup Spain. We never really saw him at his 100% this year. He was supposed to do the other shows like Dubai Pro, but that never happened. And I didn't know if he was going to actually do a surgery, but apparently he did it. And the injury he had was not something to be taken lightly. It was actually a pretty bad injury because here is what he said to AJ Kelly Roberts, who made a post on Instagram. So he says, I just spoke to Michael Krizio, who is fresh out of surgery. He had a successful shoulder surgery. The doctor just found out that he had two torn tendons for over a year. Krizio will be out of the gym for about 8 to 12 weeks, but is expected to have a full recovery. Obviously, the good news is that he fixed the problem now, as he had continued to train with two torn tendons. It would have been a disaster. We are predicting a way improved Michael Krizio sometime in 2025, as he has been restricted from training fully for a long time. So, apparently, for 8 to 12 weeks, Krizio will not be able to train. I mean, maybe he's not be able to train legs, but, you know, considering the way he is... I feel like he's gonna take some serious rest from everything. I don't. I feel like uh, I feel like he doesn't enjoy bodybuilding that much. I feel like he's doing it because he's only good at it. Kind of like um, Nikola Jokic, if you guys follow basketball, like he's good at his <laughs> he's good at his job and he's doing it and he's doing it really well. And I feel like Krizio's the same way. You know, he feels like he doesn't really love bodybuilding that much. Maybe I'm mistaken. Maybe that's just the impression that I'm getting from him when he talks about it in his videos. He seems kind of lazy, so I feel like he's gonna enjoy this time off of the gym. And I feel like when he gets back to it fully, he's probably gonna be you know, more motivated, so I'm expecting actually in 2025 to see the best version of Mikhail Krizio so far, I mean, he won't really lose anything in 8 to 12 weeks, that's like 2 to 3 months, he's gonna just, you know, rest up his body, you know, maybe his body is gonna get fresher as well, he's, he's definitely gonna stay off of the gear for that time being, and uh, when he gets back to training, I feel like his body's gonna respond really well, and again, I hope that he's gonna realize uh, how much he actually loves bodybuilding, I mean, I'm sure he loves it to a point, but he probably got a little bit tired of it, like, and there is certain pressure that he's experiencing for the past couple of years since he switched to the IBB, here it is much, much different than the European bodybuilding, there are no fans over there, uh, there is no following, now he's being closely monitored by everybody, and you know how critical the fans are, and YouTubers, guys like me, and Instagram pages, everybody's gonna criticize him a lot if he's not on, so there is a lot of pressure, I'm sure it's kind of killing the fun a little bit for him, so now that he has some time off, I feel this is gonna be a great thing for Krizio and his future career, I'm expecting his absolute best next year, and he's gonna go to the Mr. Olympia, and then next year at the Mr. Olympia, I think he's gonna make a leap, you know, last year he was 7th, can he be top 6 next year? This year, I don't think it will happen, but next year, who knows, it's very possible. But no, we won't see any more of him this year, next year, hopefully, he's gonna be at his absolute best. Alright, and finally, we got a little posing video of Brett Wilkin at around 6 weeks out of Legion Sports Fest. And yeah, based on what I'm seeing right here, I'm pretty sure this guy is gonna win Legion, even though Patrick Moore is, is actually coming strong, it's gonna be a good battle, but I don't see Patrick beating this, this is actually looking really good, really complete, I feel like Brett actually made some solid progress in his legs, that was his weakest point last time we saw him on stage, now it looks better. And I'm not saying he gained a ton of size, he actually didn't, he looks pretty much similar size, but he added, I don't know what is it, maybe some details in the quads, maybe like some, some parts of the quad grew, but his legs are definitely looking a lot thicker from front side and the back as well, his upper body right now is phenomenal, like very aesthetic, very full and round, big enough if you ask me, conditioning for 6 weeks out, it's amazing, it's great. I honestly feel like this guy has a ton of potential, honestly, now if he qualifies for the Olympia 2025 by winning the Legion Sport, he's gonna have a year, an entire year of off-season, 
where he can progress even more. But really, what are his weak points at this point? Like, he has pretty good legs now, his back is also great, it's phenomenal, his arms are big and full, his shoulders are massive as well. Somebody said in the comment section of my previous video that his uh, shoulders are narrow, and maybe sure his clavicles are a bit shorter, but he is not that narrow, come on. Like, he's not Hassan Mustafa narrow, he's not Phil Heath narrow, he is wide enough. I didn't really see any big weaknesses, really. The chest is good, the abs are phenomenal, which is a very important thing these days. Hamstrings, you can see very good, calves are even there, glutes are spot on, the back really came up as well. He is actually very, very good, and in one year, guys, give him one year to get even bigger, fuller, rounder, or just to polish his physique a little bit more, to work on details and stuff like that. If he keeps his, his shape, his uh, symmetry and stuff like that, he is gonna be really good. I can definitely see this guy in the top 10 at the Mr. Olympia with slightly more improved physique and maybe better conditioning than usual. He has all the tools, really. He, he is a great bodybuilder, Brett Wilkin, for sure. A little bit underrated, if you ask me. But whatever you guys think, make sure to let me know down below in the comment section. If you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up for more content like this, guys. Subscribe to this channel, stay tuned, thank you so much for watching, see you soon guys, all the best, and bye bye.